605 here with Coach Jeremy Josiah again with the uh, Dakota Wesleyan's men's team. Uh, thanks, Coach, for stepping in with us. Yeah, absolutely. Your coach is uh, raising, or your team's raising some eyebrows around the country. Yeah, you know, I, I wish we'd done it a little sooner. Um, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. We've first time Dakota Wesleyan's ever beat a team that received national ranking votes. Um, we've got another one on the schedule next week. Um, almost took away the number one team, put them down, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're playing the right soccer. We're peaking at the right time. We just got to keep it going. Who are some of the guys who are really standing out for you this, uh, right now? Well, I mean, obviously Eric Moeller from Rapid City Stevens. Uh, he's just an anchor for us in the back. And right next to him is Trent Robbins um, from Watertown. Uh, two sophomores, which is just phenomenal to see them play top 25 teams uh, and doing a great job shutting people down. Um, and then, you know, also our entire back line is South Dakota guys. Um, we have Aaron Foss from Rapid City Stevens playing left back and Austin Munyans playing right back uh, from Pierre. So it's fantastic to see those guys playing. And then we also have Eric Christensen's playing center mid for us. Uh, he's doing a great job. And then Nick Sterling and Dan Hagen up top are scoring uh, quite a few goals for us. Well, that's uh, something a lot of people wouldn't expect. They'd be having that much success with all these South Dakota guys in your team. Yeah, the work rate is just phenomenal. Uh, and you, you can't say that they're not athletes. And as long as they're putting, I think, another system that works, that plays to the strengths of South Dakota players, we can compete with top 25. You know, And we've proven that. And these guys are still young. A lot of these guys are still juniors and sophomores. And so I'll give them another year, I think we'll be a top 25 team. You know, we were talking with one of the players we know here the other night, and he was uh, talking about how he feels like he's uh, an integral part of a family in this team this year. Yeah, I think if guys are going to play for each other, they have to feel that way. They have to go out on the field and fight for one another. Um, and it's not about the coach. It's not about the school. It's not about – uh, individual players. It's about a team fighting together, um, trying to pick each other up, uh, and you know, going out and they want to do well for one another. Um, and if you walk away from four years of playing college soccer, not having any made any close friends for the rest of your life, it's a loss of four years. So there's something more important than just winning titles. Uh, it's also building relationships that last for a lifetime too. So I think the guys are doing that. I remember uh, talking with one of my old players, a kid named Jake Vallette, played uh, down at. <clears throat> um, in Iowa and, and uh, played at Buena Vista. And they didn't really have that successful a team. But he says that that team was, uh, I mean, that's his family kind of for the rest of his life, right alongside his real family. Yeah, you know, I played on a successful college team uh, and guys were out for their own. They were trying to get good stats. Um, I don't talk to any of those guys anymore. And then I played for another college team. I transferred and we weren't very good at all. Uh, but I talked to those guys all the time. And uh, it's definitely you're building relationships for a lifetime, and that has to be a priority for college, I think, no matter what you go to school for. Well, and you're absolutely right. So, you know, now here we are right in the middle of having, seeing all the best players in South Dakota. Uh, I've seen you out on the fields, on the corners with the other coaches looking at these uh, players, and it uh, looks like we got a pretty good crop of kids this year. Yeah, I think uh, every team's got three or four players. I think any college coach would want to have on their program. Um, and both for AA and A. There's some good players in the Class A division too. And uh, the tough thing is, I think, for South Dakota kids to see that uh, there are options out there for them. Um, you know, some of these guys, they don't play, especially maybe some of the Class A guys, they don't think that college soccer is an option, especially with only four college men's teams uh, in the state of South Dakota. Um, so it's really fun to see these guys playing uh, in a tournament setting, um, see their seasons come to fruition. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of talent out there that we'd love to have at the Decouple of SM, So I've seen a couple of these kids at A that would play, would start in any team here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, that you look at any of these Class A teams um, that are here at State, and it seems like the field is really even this year for both AA and A. I mean, you're seeing some upsets that you weren't planning on seeing, and it just shows that the talent pool is getting a lot bigger in South Dakota than what it has been in the past. You know, <clears throat> around the country, uh, some of the sometimes the club coaches complain about schoolboy soccer, but you know when you look on the sidelines here, it's the the club coaches or the high school coaches too. So we're seeing better training throughout in almost every team this year. Yeah, and I you know and I think missing out on the high school playing experience, I think that's a shame. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, I, I understand the whole philosophy of club academy development of soccer. I understand that. You know, I was in Texas where soccer coaches were. 
the assistant coaches for the varsity football team. Uh, and this was their second job to make them full time. Um, but yeah, up here in South Dakota, you have quality high school coaches that are doing a good job developing the kids. Uh, and they have something to play for. And I think that might be one thing that our club program in South Dakota lacks that the high school can give them is a tournament to play for, that they see a lot of competition, um, school pride. Uh, you know, we don't have a state league for club. And so it's kind of hard to see that. So it's good to see these guys fight for something, um, make progress through the season. Uh, and, and the tactical adjustments coaches are making this year are really interesting too. So You know, uh, and really a lot of people agree there's really nothing better than playing for your school. It's a whole different deal than playing with your club team. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, honestly, that's kind of what college coaches look for as well. I look for guys who – have school pride, who want to, you know, like you were talking about, that team chemistry we have. Uh, there's got to be some school pride. There's got to be, uh, you know, just that we want to take it to the next level for our school. We want, we're proud to wear our colors. You know, I think there's a lot to be said for that. So now when you take a look at some of these top players and uh, you look at a player that's got a 3-8 versus a player that's got a 2-6, which one of those guys are you going to go talk to? Well, all things being equal besides the GPA of the 3 8 uh, if only for the fact that we can give them more scholarship money with a 3-8. But um, I think there's also something to be said for, uh, you know, if they can balance well in high school, maybe there's a ability to balance as well in college. But I can't say much for the 2-6 kid, though, either, because I was one of those guys, too. Coming out of high school, I, I cared more about my sports. But then once I got to college, I started to find some balance. So uh, we go after those kids, too. You know, back in the old Neanderthal days, back in the mid-70s, I had to carry a 1.6 to maintain my scholarship down at the U. Things, things have changed quite a bit since then. Yeah, and, you know, and being a small college, our emphasis is academics. Uh, and we reward kids who have good academics. And so uh, it's obviously a lot easier for a kid to find ways to pay for school if their academics are better. Um, but uh, I think also at Dakota Wesleyan, we do a great job helping kids graduate. Um, we have a four-year guarantee. Uh, if our kids are struggling, even below 3.0, we put them through an academic uh, system where we want to make sure they're graduating in four years, that we are keeping track of their grades, their progress. Are they turning in assignments? Are they showing up to class? Um, and it might seem a little like we're babying them, but uh, we're trying to give them the tools to be successful academically as well as on the field. Well, I know from my perspective and knowing so many of these kids that are in your team, um, it's really been fantastic watching them uh, from being grade schoolers all the way to developing into solid young women, women and men, and that's what college is supposed to be about. Yeah, absolutely, and we, we hope that the guys are learning values and, and uh, learning morals and uh, things that will help them to be successful outside of soccer because we know not very many of our guys are going to go and play professional soccer. Uh, and so we want them to be young men of character, and that's a, a huge priority for the Dakota Wesleyan program. Um, and teaching them responsibility in the classroom is part of that. Um, and so keeping them accountable, I think, is part of teaching them, okay, if you're accountable to somebody, then you're going to be putting in more time to be responsible. So I wish they'd do that on Wall Street. Coach, I know you got to get out here and, uh, and uh, look at some more players. Really do appreciate the time you've given us today. And uh, every time we've asked, you've always said yes, and I, I can't tell you thank you enough for that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I just love the site. I love that you guys keep coming out to all this stuff. I love that you're involving the college coaches and the players. Uh, and so really appreciate what you're doing for the game as well. So thanks. We're promoting the sport. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks.